This time on Dog Strip, we get back to building our second double-ended figure eight race car, taking the two already cut up cars and slapping them together. You join us already working on our new double ended figure eight race car. So be sure to check out the previous videos where we chop up the old double ender and drag home the new parts cars. With the old double ender stripped and disposed of, the garage is empty and we are now ready to move in the next festival. That was stupid. Well, time to adapt and overcome. Moving on to plan B. Never let fear or common sense hold you back. I've had an accident. I think we found out what was making the smoke. That is the water pump and alternator belt. And it is warm and toasty. And, and chunky. Save that for later. Did you hit the wall? I did. Okay. It came within inches <laughs> of that back. I mean, within an inch. Because you went over the steel. Okay. Ahead of us now is a lot of wrenching. The engines we've previously harvested from the first double ender are in much better condition than these. So here we are, pulling four engines to build one vehicle. Nah, 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 nah. Or some child lullaby, something. Now let's shift our attention to my engine from the old double ender. This thing has a broken CV axle stuck in the transmission. It overheated, locked up, and it got sprayed down with a fire extinguisher because it was thought to be on fire. But once it cooled down, it ran pretty good. Much better than this carbureted engine. Time to swap some parts around. This is the fuel injected motor from the old double ender car. We are going to put it in a carbureted car. So this is a stripped down wiring harness for a fuel injected car. Let's give it a test, make sure it works. Good girl. It should also be mentioned, this clutch also gave up the ghost while moving around the driveway throughout the off season even more of a reason to pull this gearbox off. Let's see how much clutch is left. Oh my God. Oh, <laughs> it's gone. Some, none. Completely, completely cooked off. Five-speed transmission and clutch were toast on the old fuel-injected motor, so we're going to take the old four-speed off of the carbureted motor, clutch, and slap it on the fuel-injected motor. Hopefully it all fits and works. Fun fact, it did in fact all fit together. The only difference between a Festiva four-speed and five-speed transmission is the physically missing fifth gear. For obvious reasons, the Festiva four-speed is less desirable than a five-speed. Seeing as this vehicle will never reach highway speeds again, 
combined with a high likelihood of future carnage, this four speed is best suited for this application. We'd rather break a four speed before breaking another five speed transmission. Next, we swap ends and yank the tire and motor from the red car. We did manage to get this one to run, but with over 500,000 kilometers on it, there isn't much life left in it. Wow, holy crap. Uh, I can no longer see you. So what do we do? Swap in a slightly less tired motor. At least this one keeps the oil in it. And now we have two. The idea is the same plan that we had a few years ago. We took two cars, made them one. But as you can see, a wee bit too long at this point. So the idea is to zigzag it, cut out the passenger B pillar, and make them one. So yeah, these cars are 30, 35 years old. They've got a bit of rust. So one, the rockers are absolutely gone. We're gonna extend the rockers from the white one into the red one, and that means the B pillar has to be completely separated from this rocker. That's gonna flop, cop, around. And because of that, we're gonna weld in some braces just so it stays in the place it wants to be when we transfer it from one body to the other. We're doing this way too complicated. Buzz. 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 Put the two halves together. Boom! And it's just that easy. Everyone should build the double ended race car. After patching over more rusted through areas of the rotten rockers, the two halves are nicely welded together. Now we can remove the old unwanted windshields. These things are glued in place and are never fun to deal with. Next, we start installing the safety cage. Luckily, we managed to cut the cage out of the old car so we don't have to build a brand new one from scratch. Let us play you the song of our people. First try this year, trying to start the double-ended car. Nothing right now. Check the spark. Off the spark. I know what it is. I know what it is. A Ford Festiva fuel injected car has a inertia switch that's usually in the trunk. This wearing harness has never been modified yet. That switch is probably not making continuity. And it's somewhere in there. Probably right there. Let's go hunt for two wires. Okay. Fuel pump inertia switch bypassed. Basically, it provided the ground for the fuel pump. So, now we should have some noise. Check engine. That needs a fucking muffler. Wow. Good girl. Let's see if end number two starts.
so loud. This year we're going with some huge door bars. Primarily because this was leftover steel from Dreadnought's rear bumper. But also, you can never be too safe. At this point in the build, it's crunch time. And we only have a few build days left, so we didn't get to record much. This particular morning, we're hitting the road for the OG Gambler 500. But before we leave, we have to roll the car outside for a coat of paint. This is where things get catastrophic. We just put the car in gear, ignition off, and bump the starter, and bang! The transmission explodes, spider gears, and oil all over the floor. Our hearts just drop. We roll the car outside, finish the paint job, and hit the road. Here, without being asked, my father swaps transmissions for us as we are away for the weekend. Huge props and thanks go to Frank. There's not much else to tell you at this point, other than we took the last day to finish up the odds and ends and roll into the Abbotsford Agri-Fair Arena around midnight. We made it, so be sure to check out the next video to see how we do at racing. Hello folks, we have a brand new exciting announcement for you. We have finally set up Patreon and buy us a coffee. Don't worry, Dogstrip is not going behind a paywall. Basically, all our videos will still be on YouTube. You could have seen this video a week early on Patreon. Also, Patreon is there just for you to show your support. And see behind the scenes, the craziness that has not been seen on videos, or my hobo treat. That's right. There's different tiers. Check it out. It's a good place for you to help us make the channel grow. Yes. And as always, thank you. Next time, on Dogstrip, we're off to the Abbotsford Agri Fair with our double-ended figure eight race car. Now, be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next video. Give us a thumbs up if you like what we're doing.